Lord be with you. And also Welcome to our Wednesday morning Eucharist. Let us pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting them to the Lord's table. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Merciful God, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose sovereign purpose none can make void, Give us faith to be steadfast amid the tumults of this world, knowing that your kingdom shall come and your will be done to your eternal glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Would you be seated for the readings? A reading from the book of Revelation. In my vision I looked, and there in heaven a door stood open, and the first voice, which I had heard speaking to me like a trumpet, said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the Spirit, and there in heaven stood a throne, with one seated on the throne, and the one seated there looks like jasper and carnelian, and around the throne is a rainbow that looks like an emerald. Around the throne are 24 thrones, and seated on the thrones are 24 elders, dressed in white robes, with golden crowns on their heads. Coming from the throne are flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder. And in front of the throne burn seven flaming torches, which are the seven spirits of God. And in front of the throne, there is something like a sea of glass, like crystal. Around the throne and on each side of the throne are four living creatures, full of eyes in front and behind the first living creature like a lion, the second living creature like an ox, the third living creature with a face like a human face, and the fourth living creature like a flying eagle. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and inside. Day and night without ceasing they sing, Holy, 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 the Lord God, the Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honour and thanks to the one who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall before the one who is seated on the throne and worship the one who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne, singing, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power, for you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. 
the word of the Lord. We make the response to the verses of the psalm, Holy, holy, holy Lord, mighty God. Holy, holy, holy Lord, mighty God. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his surpassing greatness. Holy, holy, holy Lord, mighty God. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Holy, holy, holy Lord, mighty God. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I have chosen you from the world, says the Lord, to go and bear fruit that will last. Hallelujah. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke, chapter 19, beginning at the 11th verse. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As the crowd was listening, Jesus went on to tell a parable because he was near Jerusalem and because they supposed that the kingdom of God was to appear immediately. So Jesus said, A noble man went to a distant country to get royal power for himself and then return. He summoned ten of his slaves and gave them ten pounds and said to them, Do business with these until I come back. But the citizens of his country hated him and sent a delegation after him saying, we do not want this man to rule over us. When he returned, having received royal power, he ordered these slaves to whom he had given the money to be summoned so that he might find out what they had gained by trading. The first came forward and said, Lord, your pound has made 10 more pounds. The nobleman said to him, well done, good slave. Because you have been trustworthy in a very small thing, take charge of ten cities. The second came, saying, Lord, your pound has made five pounds. The nobleman said to him, And you, rule over five cities. Then the other came, saying, Lord, here is your pound. I wrapped it in a piece of cloth, for I was afraid of you, because you are a harsh man. You take what you did not deposit and reap what you did not sow. The nobleman said to him, I will judge you by your own words, you wicked slave. You knew, did you, that I was a harsh man, taking what I did not deposit and reaping what I did not sow? Why then did you not put my money in the bank? Then when I returned, I could have collected it with interest. The nobleman said to the bystanders, Take the pound from him and give it to the one who has ten pounds. And they said to him, Lord, he has ten pounds. The nobleman said, I I tell you, to all those who have, more will be given. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. But as for these enemies of mine who did not want me to be king over them, Bring them here and slaughter them in my presence. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. For the Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Said at morning prayer, this reading's becoming a bit of a theme. We had it um, Sunday for the, Euch- the, the Matthew, Matthew's version, Sunday at the Eucharist. Um, we had the Matthew version in morning prayer, and now we have the Luke version. And it's one of those times where Luke's version is quite extraordinary. 
um, in some of the uh, surrounding detail of the parable. This is really uh, an end times parable. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem, on his way to crucifixion. Uh, in Matthew's version, he's already in Jerusalem. It's just it's one of the last parables, whichever gospel you read. Um, and in a sense, both Matthew and Luke are retelling a parable Jesus tells, but translating it for their community. And so it, sounds, it can sound like quite different parables because of the different context. The clue that it's an end times parable, hence the extraordinary imagery, um, comes in things like, uh, a nobleman went to a distant country to get royal power for himself and return, um, and the thing about the citizens of his country hating him. And so that battle between good and evil. And we know that the um, temple authorities, those who should be the inside of, of insiders of God's kingdom, are opposed to Jesus. And I think as you read that, we see that he's referring to their opposition. The people of my own country, my own household are rejecting me, which is what is about to happen. We also know that um, Luke is adapting this parable for his community because he talks about, at the start, people um, expecting the kingdom of God to suddenly appear. Now that would have been much more true of Matthew's community uh, who had been now waiting perhaps 50 years, 60 years since the resurrection, uh, waiting for the kingdom of God to come back, than the disciples around Jesus who were still trying to understand everything going on. The third clue we have that this is an end times parable um, is its placement in the church's year. As we prepare for Christ the King, we hear three times within five days a parable about a master going away and about what might happen while he's away and the call to serve faithfully as we prepare for the coming of the kingdom, the, the focus of our worship on the coming weekend, the Feast of Christ the King. But what about the content of the parable? We've often used this parable to talk about how we use our talents or our gifts. Some of that's come because um, here Jesus gives pounds, but in Matthew Jesus gives talents, a coin worth about 20 years wages. And so we've often said, so go and use your talents well. But this parable is, there is an aspect of that, but about much more than that. And I want to say that there are three things for us to think of. First of all, a master goes away and entrusts his treasure to his slaves, to his employees, to those who work for him. However it's distributed, he entrusts his treasure to his staff, gives them everything he has, and then he says, go away, trade, do what you like, do the best you can with this, and when I come back, we will see how you went. He doesn't give them instructions about what stocks to trade in and what stocks not to trade in. He doesn't threaten them. He doesn't do anything else. He entrusts them with his treasure, and he says, go and make this work for you. So firstly, we see that the master is generous. Secondly, we see that when his, um, his servants respond to that generosity, they find themselves rewarded. Ten cities to rule over, five cities to rule over. He doesn't take the money and say, good work, I'll give you a small pay rise. He gives them part of his own kingdom. Jesus, as he goes from us and entrusts to us the work of the kingdom here, also makes us sharers in that kingdom. But we can refuse to reject the master's generosity, which is what the third servant does in the parable. In Matthew, he says, I was afraid, or in this one too, I was afraid because you're a harsh man. And the master says, uses his own words against him, you have judged me to be something that has caused you to fail to act. Um, I read a quote on the week, for the weekend sermon that said, in a way, this man got the God he uh, imagined. He placed himself away from receiving God's generosity. And why was he afraid? 
There seems nothing in a master who would give his kingdom to the entirety of his kingdom to his staff, to his servants, to his men, to be afraid of. There's a generosity here that we are invited to respond to. The call of the parable then, I think, particularly in the context we see it today as we wait for the return of Christ, and if, Math, uh, if Luke's community was becoming impatient, uh, you know, it's been 2,000 years for us that we have said we wait for Christ to come. We've learned to take the longer view on that. But every time we say the creed, we affirm that Christ will, we believe Christ will come. In the meantime, we are not to stand here looking up to heaven waiting. We are to be about the work of the kingdom here. We are to be using the pounds that God gives us, the talents that God gives us, whatever other term we want to call it, to be working for God's kingdom now, that we might be signs of the kingdom here and into the future. And then we are called to trust God with the future that is yet unknown to us. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the church. Gracious God, we entrust our lives to you. And we grant that, and we pray that you would grant that we would be faithful in all that we do. And that by your grace, we might be signs of your kingdom of love and generosity here in this place. We pray for your worldwide church as it seeks to follow the call to be faithful to you and your, your people here. We pray for the Archbishop of Canterbury, for the Australian Anglican Church and our Primate Jeff, for the church in this diocese, for Peter, our Bishop. Continue to guide us each day as we seek to discern your will. Lord, in your mercy, we pray, Father, for the world. So many places deep in the grip of coronavirus, heavy lockdown, high infection rates, high deaths. We pray for people everywhere traumatised by this virus. And for world leaders as they try and steer us through. We pray for the leaders of our country, for Scott, our Prime Minister, and Gladys, our Premier, and those who advise them. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for our communities, our families, our neighbours, our friends, those we work alongside those we spend our time with this day. We pray for them. Fill all that we do with your love. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those in sickness or other need, holding before you in our prayers, Les, Sam, Sarah, Nicolette, Lee, Defford, Bob and Anita, Michelle, Kylie, Oscar, Rose, Jocelyn, Nixon, Philip, Jansen, Cliff, Athel, Chris, Bruce, Sonia, Chris, John, Di, Jamie, Elaine, Kathy, Nancy and Gwen. Bring them healing, peace and grace each according to their needs and be with their families and those who support them. Lord, in your mercy, we give thanks for your promise of life forever in your kingdom where we shall join that great vision of heaven with the saints singing around the throne of, around your throne. 
We commend to your loving care Phyllis Mary Gallagher. And today on their anniversaries, Anne Roslyn Fitzpatrick, Eileen Brown, Robin Saunders, and Cecil Ma, your priest. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We are the body of Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Does this um, indicate to one another a sign of peace? Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will be for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will be our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty, our joy, and our salvation that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For he is the true high priest who has freed us from our sins and made us a royal priesthood to serve you, our God and Father. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, whom you sent to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. Hear us, merciful Lord, through Christ accept the, our sacrifice of praise and by the power of your word and Holy Spirit sanctify this bread and wine that we who share in this holy sacrament may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. Who, when his hour had come, on the night before he went up to the cross to make full atonement for the sins of the whole world, offering once for all his one sacrifice of himself, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He shared the cup with them, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, in obedience to his command, we commemorate and celebrate his saving passion and death, his mighty resurrection and ascension into heaven, and we eagerly await his coming again in glory. We thank you that by your grace alone, you have accepted us in Christ 
And here we offer you this spiritual sacrifice, holy and acceptable in your sight. Through Christ, receive this our duty and service, and grant that we who eat and drink these holy gifts may by your Holy Spirit be one body in Christ and serve you in unity and peace. In your grace and mercy, bring us to the joy of your eternal kingdom with all a company of the redeemed. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father eternal, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ, keep me in eternal life. The blood of Christ keep us in eternal life. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you that in this sacrament you assure us of your goodness and love. Accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving and help us to grow in love and obedience that we may serve you in the world and finally be brought to that table where all your saints feast with you forever. 
Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.